Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. Today I want to clarify something which I had said on a YouTube video with case of a couple of days back on the podcast, which was regarding DMAT account operations and investment operations in the case you become an NRI and or if you're an NRI and what is the procedure to invest in India. I wanted to clear up the confusion a little bit because it is uh, this is what the rules are. So I don't want any confusion and misunderstanding to happen. So for that alone, I thought I'll just quickly get into this and discuss it. It's a very short video. It's an explainer video and I won't occupy too much of your time. So let me get right into it. So if you are a resident Indian and you've opened a DMAT account, you know how it works. You use your app and you're buying and all that. Now, let's say you've got a job and you moved out of India. You know, you've been buying in your online zero da account. You've been using a HDFC savings account to buy the shares and you have left India. The rule is after staying 180 or 182 days outside India consecutively, you become your status as a resident Indian changes to a non-resident Indian. You're not residing in India anymore. So what you're requested to do by law or the rules is you have to inform your uh, broker, which is zero da, you have to inform them that you have become an NRI and you have to inform your bank that your status has changed to an NRI. When you do that, they in turn will require you to give address proof and uh, visa and everything, whatever, wherever you are, all that has to be shared. But remember, this has to be done physically. So you cannot do this remotely. So you'll have to do this physically. And you'll have, when you come to India next time, you'll have to have to go to your bank and spend some time and convert this to an NRO account. To convert to an NRO account, like I said, you'll have to do some paperwork and you'll have to do it in being there physically to do it. So make sure that you give a heads up to your organizations your bank and your broker and let them know that you're planning to come in and you need to get this done and the relevant forms and they'll tell you what all documentation is required. So when you convert it to an NRO account, what happens is your existing investments which you've made in India stays in that account, right? And uh, your savings account becomes an NRO account. And whatever money which you have, there's one more thing which you have to do is known as a PIS. PIS stands for Portfolio Investment Scheme. It is to inform the RBI that you have become an NRI. Now, there's another portion to this where if you have started earning money abroad and you want to use this money to invest in India, you have to open another account in your bank and another account with your broker. This is called the NRE account, which is a non-resident external account. There's another savings account which will open with your bank and you'll have another DMAT account which is opened as an NRE. The transactions which you do in the NRE account the funds which come into it can be taken back outside India. The funds which are there in the NRO account cannot be taken out of India. I mean, they can be taken, but we have to take permission and there's a whole bunch of other things you have to do to take money out of India. There's a limit to it. The NRE doesn't have these kind of restrictions. It's different. So you'll have two different accounts. You'll have an NRO account where your old investments will be sitting and your new DMAT account, which is the NRE account, and you'll have an NRE savings account and you'll have a separate portfolio uh, investment scheme permission taken for that one. And the way it works is from your NRO account, it'll go to your portfolio investment scheme account. And from that, it goes to your DMAT account. And then whatever you buy, it's used, utilized. Same way when the money, when you sell something, it will go back into your PIS account and then go back to your NRO or NRE account. The main reason why the PIS is there for the NRE is it is for taxation. It is taxes, depending on which slab you fall under, they'll be taking tax. And if it's in the NRE, your taxes, I think, is the 30% plus some surcharges and everything come around 32 to 33% tax is taken off and the money is returned to you, depending on the capital gains, if it's short term or if it's long term capital gains. Again, I'm just brushing this very broadly. If you want more details, reach out to us. I'll give you more details when I really understand what your case is. I'm just broadly walking through this so you know what it is. And uh, what you should keep in mind is as a non-resident Indian in your NRO account, you are allowed to buy stocks, you can invest in mutual funds and you can buy bonds. As an NRE, you're allowed to buy stocks, you're allowed to buy mutual funds, but you're not allowed to buy bonds in the NRE account because the money is, has, can be taken out of India. So those are the rules which are there. So you cannot invest in bonds in your NRE account, but in your NRO account, you can definitely invest in bonds. Now, let's say if hypothetically you're a person who has left 
India right after you finished your college, your first job happens to be abroad or you're a person who's gone abroad and you have no income in India. You don't have any rental income, you have no uh, dividends or anything in India and you've got a PAN number, then it is possible that you can create an NRO account and buy the bonds and uh, what do you call file ITR and claim your tax back because as a non-resident Indian, your tax lab will be immediately at 30 percent, bonds will be directed at 30 percent and uh, so let's say if even for that uh, PAN number as an individual, the basics if you're below 7 lakhs a year, you don't have to pay tax, your tax is nil. So what will happen is let's say you've bought uh, 70 lakhs worth of bonds and you've got 10 percent interest, they deduct tax at source 2 and a half lakhs and they'll give you the remaining money to your account. Then using your PAN number as an NRO, you can file your IT returns and claim back the two and a half lakhs. That option is there, that's allowed. So I hope you kind of understand, broadly speaking, how this whole NRO, NRE and DMAT account and PIS all work. And most important thing is remember you have to do this physically in person. Once you've gone abroad and you've set yourself up, you will have to carve some time out to come back to India or in your next trip to India, you will have to intimate your bank and your broker that you have become an NRI and do the needful. This is why it's important to have a good uh, financial advisor on board so they can walk you through all this, the rules and regulations. And also I'm not even talked into the taxation, what all implications of taxation in this. So it kind of gives you a broad idea. And this is one of the main reasons I say if investing abroad or investing wherever you want to, if it aligns with your goals, then go for it. If it doesn't align with your goals, because the amount of work which is also involved in paperwork and all that, it's tedious unless you're really into it and you're really interested in it. So make sure you don't unnecessarily load yourself up with uh, more paperwork and more confusion, then you really don't know what you're doing and it gets even more uh, cumbersome for you. So this is my advice. See your goals and align yourself correctly and invest towards that. I've put all of this down in a much more detailed uh, article in my medium page which i hope you can have some time to get inside and read i've explained in great detail what this nre nro and nri what all of these are and how your status can change how dmat accounts are created and used for an nri and how money moves around and how little bit more about how taxation and source happens for each one so do give it a read and give me your comments and i would love your feedback on this Please do remember this is a very basic video. This doesn't get really dive into even anything in any nuanced matter. This is just to clarify because a lot of you have understood from my speaking with Kesav that you can go outside and operate. Another thing which I was did say in the video which you should keep bear in mind is when I said you can transfer it to your parents name and you can continue. That involves two things. If you're gifting it, that is gift tax also in it. And if you're selling it and you're showing it as a sale and buy by your parents, there is also tax on that implication. So keep that also in mind. There's tax implication everywhere and anywhere. You just can't transfer the shares to you and somebody else and not be expected to pay for it. So I hope this video clarifies some of it. I'm sure if some of you will have some more doubts. Do reach out to me and I'll try and clarify as many of them as I can. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye. Good evening. My team has decided to do another event. The last event was at Trivandrum was a very successful one. So we decided to ask people where we wanted to do an event and my team chose to do an event in Dubai. We are planning to do an event in Dubai on the 24th of February. The event is roughly scheduled between 3.30 to 5.30. It's a Saturday, you will have plenty of time. Those desirous of attending the event or meeting me may contact my team at the WhatsApp number given below or drop an email at the email ID given. My team will contact you and help you. I hope to meet you all in Dubai. It's not only Dubai, anywhere from the Emirates. I hope to see you there. Thank you. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support.
If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.